we're just going to buck off. Simple little box here. And what I did is I assigned a keyboard shortcut kind of D to the smart dimension. So I don't have to go and click it every time. I can just type D. Remember how to do that? Uh -huh. Remember if we go to Tools, Customize, then Keyboard, and you can come down here to Smart, and just go over here to the shortcuts, click in that box, and type D. And then that'll assign D to the Smart Dimension. So anytime you hit D, it'll do a Smart Dimension. You don't have to go up and click it all the time. Now for me, that saves a lot of time. So, yes, good. <coughs> um, actually, I'll save this down for you guys. That's on the H drive now for you guys. If you want to open that part. <coughs> Reference is the, the H drive, the, the V4 4, the team, and then it's called Reference. <coughs> so we're going to work on this reference geometry here. So we're going to draw planes, axes, and points. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we won't get in coordinate systems because there's okay. Yeah, let me give it back to you guys. <clears throat> We're not gonna go into the, the references or the coordinate systems because I just we've got a coordinate system here. When you go into a sketch it kind of reorient for that sketch. I've never found a use for changing the overall coordinate system. Um, the only time I think that might be useful is if you wanted to change where it was for doing a, like a center mass or something like that. Um, but if you know kind of how you want to do that, you should set up your part, the correct orientation to begin with. Um, and on the SOLIDWORKS exam, if you ever do that, they'll actually give you a drawing with the, the UCS, not like this. UCS has to be turned or something. So then all you have to do is you have to turn it over so the UCS matches it and then start drawing. And it's a piece of cake. So I've never gotten into that, that change in the reference system. Um, but, but the planes, axes, and points, we use all the time. The main reference is for if you're going to be doing assemblies and you know that you have two parts and you want to find how they're going to go together now, you can do that. I find it's easier once I'm in the assembly. I like to just do it there. But if you had a common part that you do all the time, and then whenever you make a new thing that that's going to go into, you can just make that mate reference. And when you put it in the assembly, it'll just snap right to it. So if you're going to do it all the time, it'd be a good thing. 
But if you're just doing a couple parts and different parts, I'd like to just put them together in the assembly the way I want them. Uh, that way you have more control once you're in the assembly. And you're not to, it's a little less pre-planning, a little more in the, in the, in the assembly work. <clears throat> so the first one is planes. When you click on plane, so what defines a plane? Three points, right? Or yeah, a, a, a current plane in another direction, or a plane in an axis to, to give it an angle. So if I pick on one plane, it asks me to go on a parallel to that plane, go on perpendicular to the plane, go on it just on the plane, go on at a different angle. But it doesn't really know where to go from. Because you can see up here it says select references. I can give it an angle. But if I hit OK, it's not going to do anything. It doesn't know where that's supposed to angle from. Um, but in parallel, it still doesn't know what to do. If I picked an edge, now I can tell it, OK, perpendicular. It knows it's going to go on that edge. Or angle, so I can tell it 60. Or 10. I can flip it to make it go the other direction. Um, I could give it multiples, and it'll make multiple planes. Um, I can't do a parallel on an edge. If I pick two different faces, I can just say mid-plane, it'll give me one right in between. And actually, if I just started the command, you pick that face, and that face, it's automatically going to switch it over to mid-plane. So it automatically picks mid-plane, because if you have, have two parallel things, it assumes you want to go halfway between them. So this is where if you don't start your model centered on the UCS, you can make a plane down the middle easily, as long as you have two flat planes on the sides. Um, if you put two faces that are perpendicular or at an angle to each other, it thinks you want to bisect it. So no matter what that angle is, it'll bisect it. Um, if you pick a cylindrical face, a cylinder is going to think you want it to be on the cylinder. Tell it, no, I want that to be zero degrees, or just say parallel. Right? If I want it to be on the bottom of it, just when I pick it, I need to pick on the bottom side. <clears throat> so why would, why might you want to do that? Why, why might you want a, a plane tangent to a, a cylinder? I'm never trying to have a, a hole going through the side of a cylinder. If we can't do a hole. It kind of doesn't know exactly where we want that to be on it. So it'd be better to make a, a plane that we can pick on. Um, so questions on making planes. Also, if you do a plane, you just pick on one space. You can give it a distance. So you can tell I want that to be an inch away and it'll offset it. And you just flip it to, go, to change between going into the part and going out from the part. And that's what I use a lot. <clears throat> Especially if you're going to do some more advanced things like lofts and things like that. You want to set up planes that are parallel to go to loft between. Um, or um, just if I know that I want to draw something here, I can, I can bring that up and then I can draw it down. Um, just kind of changes how you're doing it. <clears throat> but 
but usually, usually for lost is when I'll use that that one. Or if I'm trying to find something, if I'm trying to find a point on a plane, then I can use pulling planes over and I can find where they meet. And like I did on last week, remember I made that that cylinder that was at an angle. Remember for that I had to make a plane, so I made a plane. Then I told it to go an inch into it. And then I could sketch on that plane. And I was able to just convert that edge. Oh, I need to sketch. that edge and then I can just draw that and then revolve it. I did last week, right? Yeah, shouldn't the one line be a perfect square? No, it needs to be a closed so it oh then the, the construction. And that's why it would let me do it. So that's how you can, you can do those. You make a plane there and they can draw on that plane. <coughs> um, so, here, I'll let you guys try those out. Try making some planes. Try drawing that, that boss there.